thank you for joining me here today. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, using Maple to make manageable, manageable matrices. Um, that's a project that I developed under the supervision of the, uh, Professor David Jeffrey. And uh, so I'm going to have to scroll it. Sorry about this. So, so the real motivation here is uh, construction of educational material. So that means uh, exercises and uh, problems, examination questions. So uh, we're going to focus on the topic of householder transformations or QR factorization. So uh, building educational material under householder transformations. So what householder transformations is really concerned is uh, with the construction of an orthonormal basis for a given matrix or a set of vectors, okay? Um, so uh, the problem with householder is it usually contain uh, unsimplified square roots. So you usually uh, stumble upon uh, hard arithmetic, arithmetic uh, calculations throughout the uh, transformations. So uh, we're going to focus on trying to avoid that, or trying to construct problems that um, that give you rational steps throughout the transformations, so a, as well as a, as a rational result. Okay, so so the method that we developed um, it generates matrices which, when used uh, for householder transformations, it, they not only render rational results, but they render rational steps throughout the transformations. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So just be first I'm going to do a quick revision on householder. So, uh, so if you have a uh, n by n full rank matrix A in which each column is uh, called U, so UJ is, uh, is a column of A. We want to find an orthonormal basis, Q, in which uh, Q, uh, each, each uh, small Q is a column of, uh, of the matrix Q, and they obey the orthonormal relations outlined below. Okay. So you, you all know that uh, householder is not the only method for computing uh, an orthonormal basis. It's not the only way to achieve QR factorization. Uh, for example, Grand Schmidt process is a, another well-known uh, algorithm for achieving the same goal, as well as Gibbons notations. But we're going to focus on householder transformations here. So I'm going to go over a little bit uh, about the uh, householder process in detail. So, um, so first, we define a householder reflector operator for a target vector z. So, so the target vector, uh, so, so the householder reflector operator uh, applies to the vector z and uh, makes all, all of the elements except for the first one, equal to zero. So as you can see uh, from equation three, only the first element of the, uh, of the new operated uh, vector will be different than zero. And that's the goal of each step of the transformation. So it induces zeros of the components of z below the first vector's row. And that operator can be, def can be defined in terms of, uh, of another vector, uh, this, the displacement vector, which is uh, expressed in terms of that target vector, as you can see from equations four and five. So uh, V is a displacement between the vector Z and its reflection, and it's used to express the uh, householder operator. So, an, uh, so in, and one property of the householder operator that's going to be useful for us is that it is orthonormal. 
So, uh, so multiplying it by, by its transpose is a commutative operation, and, it, and it's equal to the, to the identity matrix. OK, so now that we have the operator, uh, I'm going to show you how to use it to uh, do the conduct the householder steps. So on the first step, the householder operator is applied to the matrix with the first column of the matrix for the ve target vector Z. And that induces zeros below the first row, as you can see from equation 6. And then you got to do the second step, which takes the target vector of matrix HA, which is the resulting matrix from the first step, and uh, takes the second column of that matrix below the second row. And then, uh, and, and, and of course, the, uh, the operator has to be recalculated and reapplied. And that procedure continues until all of the elements below the main diagonal <coughs> is zero. So we can, uh, one way to look at the householder process is that uh, on each step, it builds a, uh, an orthonormal uh, transformation an individual orthonormal transformation uh, that pertains to that step. So uh, if you generalize each operator H, H, HK, in which K is a step, to Q, uh, in which uh, you are extending it to the number of dimensions of your original matrix, you're going to have uh, one Q for each step as in equation 8, and when you multiply them, you have your uh, final factorization. So uh, you're reducing your initial matrix to a uh, upper triangular matrix, R. And then, uh, and of course, because of that property that we've discussed, um, that H is orthonormal, we can uh, take the product of Qs to the other side, and we have the QR factorization. So that gives us the desired matrix Q, which is in fact QT, doesn't really matter, for the QR factorization. OK, so, so the uh, householder transformation is it's well known. It's, uh, uh, we're not trying to revolutionize it. We, we don't have any, uh, anything <coughs> in mind to change it. So, th so the problem here that we want to tackle is with the process. So we want to make it easier to, for instructors to teach householder. So we know that um, a lot of square roots appear when you are uh, dealing with norms and when you are dealing with house householder transformations. So it is hard to know in advance which matrices to choose in order to set up a problem in a quiz or in, uh, in an exercise. So we designed a method that uh, generates matrices that are guaranteed to, uh, to ease that uh, burden. So, so we want to avoid square roots. So that's the main goal. And um, I'm going to show you a little bit of my method here. So, but first, I'm going to illustrate more on the difficulty of teaching householder. So take the matrix 9, which is a pretty simple matrix, a 3 by 3 matrix with lots of 1s and, and 2 and 3. So uh, you, you wouldn't imagine that matrix to, uh, to get to a lot of problems in the transformations. But in fact, uh, the, the exact opposite is what happens. So on, on the first step of the transformation, the, the displacement vector is equal to the first column. So it's pretty simple. But since its norm uh, is uh, the square root of, of 11, the, oh yeah, did, did I say displacement? It's target. So the displacement vector v will be uh, th that, that guy below. So it's, not, it, it's already not pretty. 
and uh, it doesn't get any better than this <coughs> because so when you see it, the first household when you see the first householder operator it has a lot of square roots of course it's not simplified but uh, it's not gonna look much better when when it is and uh, and, and it's not it's not nearly the end of the transformation. It's just the first operator. You have to use that opera operator and apply it to the matrix and then recalculate the operator, do the same thing. And uh, students do this manually. They, they usually don't have the aid of uh, calculators or computers to, to do exams. So, uh, so what's the point? And we don't want them to be stuck doing arithmetic instead of uh, of thinking about the main uh, thing that, that they're doing here, which is uh, factoring a matrix and uh, and then understanding the process. So, and, and of course, in Maple, you would need to use some simplification command commands here as well. It wouldn't be uh, a direct uh, calculation either. So. Okay, so that's what you get when you simplify, and uh, and, if, and if you do it by hand, it's uh, and you can see it's a lot of work. So students would obtain uh, that first one for for the operator, and when you apply the operator to the matrix, uh, you have to to perform all the operations and and get the bottom one. and then keep going until you get the final result. Okay, so as I said, we want to design an input matrix A in a way that all square roots are exact all the way through. So how do we do that? So uh, let's reflect on the equations that define the uh, householder transformations, that the equations that we use to uh, step through the problem here. So uh, you can see from the displacement vector equation that uh, if you guarantee that the target vector has a rational norm in every step, V will, be, will have rational components. And if V has rational components, you can see that the uh, Householder operation, householder operator, will be rational. So we will have rational components as well. So this way, the product of uh, Q matrices, which is which are basically uh, an, a generalization in dimension generalization of H, uh, will have rational components as well, and uh, and so does R. Okay. And uh, I'm going to talk about Pythagorean tuples, which are the building blocks of, uh, of my method. So you, you may recall from number theory that uh, Pythagorean tuples, uh, they, they have been well studied. And th there are algorithms to generate them. But it, it's not the main goal of my, of my research here. So, so I, I just took some examples from a, uh, from, from a tabulated list somewhere. And uh, so I, I can show you here some examples. So the main property of Pythagorean tuples is that, it, that their norm is, uh, is, is rational in, or integer. I'm, I'm just using integer numbers here, but uh, I've actually used rational in the algorithm. So for, so you can have Pythagorean triples, for example, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13. So uh, you, you can see the pattern there. there. So you can have quadruples as well. And uh, so the, the, the main thing is that the norm is an integer or rational number. You can have quintuples, and uh, that's going to be 
what we need to construct the target vector. Okay, so from the definition of norm, we can re-express those tuples as a vector, and uh, that's going to be kind of convenient for us to uh, express them as a vector and define them, uh, define the target vectors in terms of of uh, Pythagorean vectors. Because, uh, as you recall, if if the uh, if the target vector has uh, an, an integer or a rational norm then uh, the, the householder step will be rational. So that's what we will use. Okay, so I'm going to illustrate a 3 by 3 case here with one seed column, which is a Pythagorean vector. 1, 2, 2, it has a, an integer norm. And uh, after the first transformation, you can see it, uh, the, it, it still looks nice. And then everything is going as expected. But then you got to redefine the, uh, the householder operator. And the second target vector will be given by equation 12. So in order to guarantee that, the second step of the householder transformation will be rational, we must look for a set of variables a uh, that gives z, z2 an integer norm. So there, there are a number of ways where, uh, in which we could do the search. The, the way that we found most efficient, the way that we chose to do it, is by random search. So, uh, so what we do is, well first we take a seed vector, which is a Pythagorean vector. Actually, uh, we, since we have a procedure, the, uh, the user would specify the seed input vector, which already contains the number of dimensions that uh, they wish to, uh, to represent in the final matrix. So, so from that seed vector, the householder decomposition of a symbolic matrix with symbols uh, representing the rest of the matrix is computed with all the steps being recorded. And on that step, we look for suitable uh, intermediate columns. So, uh, so on the first step, given a seed column, we look for a second, a second column that is suitable for uh, rational transformations. And we do that by searching random vectors that result in rational z norms. And of course, we'll, we will obtain uh, more than one result if, uh, if we're lucky. Usually, we, we get um, a lot of results. And uh, we, we got to choose one because uh, your, your, matrix, your matrix has to have only one uh, column at a time. So, so you pick one column and you keep going. So the, the method will, will choose a third column for you given the seed column and the second column that you've chosen and then continue uh, to fill up your matrix until you're done. So, so for the example that I showed you, that uh, the random search has to, to look for three variables, so a, uh, one, two, 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 and uh, two, one, I think. I, I don't remember the indexes. But uh, when it has to look for three variables, it will usually return a list of suitable vectors. And uh, that's a possible output. That's one output that, uh, that we once uh, received for the uh, second column of example of the example in equation 10. So those vectors are all suitable second columns for the matrix. Okay, so um, so we have, 
the way we have developed the algorithm, you have uh, two options of interacting with it. So you can either uh, step through it manually and pick each column individually, or you can use the uh, automatic function that, that we uh, also developed. So the automatic function picks one column for you. So it, it will generate a number of columns, a number of intermediate columns for your problem, and then automatically pick uh, one for you. Uh, we also have a test function, which is not usual, not, not um, its purpose is not only to uh, test ass assurance, but also to serve as an experimenting uh, tool for the instructors. So uh, you, you all know the, uh, the challenges of working with fractions when you're dealing with uh, exact arithmetic. But uh, our goal here is to avoid square roots and not uh, big fractions, per se. So they might appear. And, uh, and when you use the, the test function and you make experiments, you can uh, look, look yourself for, and you, you try to look for um, matrices that are best behaved and uh, try to avoid those big fractions. And uh, what it does is it, ca it, it takes a, a matrix of your, uh, that you chose and it performs the QR decomposition with the householder method. And then uh, it checks whether the, each step will be in fact rational and if the QR decomposition went at it as expected. So you can see for yourself every step of the QR factorization of the, the matrix that you produce or the method produced for you. And, uh, or maybe you can change one column or another and uh, see if uh, the result changes and uh, if, you, if you get something better. How am I doing for time? I think I have five minutes, right? <coughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you some examples. I have a three by three one first. And, uh, so first, that's the result directly, but I have the steps here too. So if you take matrix 13 and you apply the householder method to it, so the first step will give you a, uh, so you can see it. It will print for you the uh, first operator and the first transformed matrix. And then the second step, you'll get the second operator all rational and the second transformed matrix all rational too. And, uh, and yeah, and, that, and, that, and there's everything to it. I mean, if you're, if you're only deal dealing with a three by three problem, you only have two, you only have two steps. And, uh, and everything is rational all the way through. Of course, some, some fractions are, are a little big. As, uh, as I said, sometimes uh, it, it can be hard to avoid. But uh, you can redo the method to pick another column and see how it behaves <laughs> to see if uh, you get something better. But our goal has been uh, uh, attained here. So we don't have square roots. So for the four by four example, I don't have all the steps print out, but trust me, they're all rational. And I have the final result, which gives me uh, a rational Q and rational R matrices. And, uh, and I also have a five by five example, 
which also gives me rational results. And in this case, uh, the fractions are not that bad, but uh, the square roots are gone. Okay, so thank you for joining me here today. Do you have any questions? Oh yeah, that's that's an interesting question. I, I haven't really thought about how it, uh, how, how the number of uh, possible cases behaves. But uh, uh, David has studied the number of uh, Pythagorean vectors that can be possible when you uh, increase the number of dimensions, and um, and and in the, and the density of those vectors are going to increase. So I'm, I'm guessing that maybe if you have more possibility of Pythagorean vectors, it may be possible <coughs> that you, you have more uh, uh, matrices as well. Yes, you, if, you're, if you're going to be posing an exam question with a 5 by 5 matrix, oh, yeah. you're expected to do by, by hand to that. OK, that, mm -hmm. that's the fun thing. You have to especially <laughs> cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> But if there's only a finite number of three by three things, uh -huh. they'll, they'll work up an exam bank of questions that you ask. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, it, it does depend on how big the numbers are because there are an infinite number of Pythagorean vectors. <laughs> so if you want to get far enough with big numbers, you can get as many as you like. Mm -hmm. oh, so you can get cruel either the size of the matrix or the size of numbers. Well, you know. Maple does arbitrary precision arithmetic, so this gives you arbitrary cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you fix the set of uh, Pythagorean <coughs> vectors, so you have that is a enumerate, you ought to be able to then enumerate how many matrices you can generate. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's one way to go. Yeah, and maybe do a list search instead of random surgery. So for, I just looked it up, for um, triples, quadruples, quintuples, and, and hexaples, there are parameterizations of the uh, Pythagorean tensibles put down there. Mm. Um, so in particular, you can make a list sort of oh. or, or a have a formula uh, mm -hmm. for, for all the uh, Pythagorean triples or quadruples. Okay. Would that possibly allow for a smarter algorithm than maybe? Search? Maybe uh, I would be interested in uh, in studying that in more detail because that may be uh, a solution. Because um, I mean, so far. Uh, We've been thinking of tabulating uh, possible matrices. So if we have a, a parametric uh, formula, f formula for for the uh, possible, I mean, a family of possible cases, that may be easier to uh, spread the word. And, and of course, uh, more smart. Yeah. Just to follow up on this, uh, on Eric's uh, comments, uh, uh, there is um, a formula to count how many solutions there are for a Diophantian equation of the form uh, sum of squares is equal to something. Mm -hmm. Right, and this is called R R K of n. Mm. This function is studied in number theory, and uh, there is a book. Uh, that gives these formulas for small values of k and okay. n. They become more and more difficult, okay. of course. Uh, 
uh, and, and, and the number of solutions up to a sign is finite. Okay. Uh, so I'm not sure when you said that there are infinitely many, you mean for every, when you vary the number of squares. Yes. Not for, for a finite number of squares, up to sign. Up to sign, there are finitely many solutions. Really? Yeah. And I have some maple code <coughs> written by a maple guru mm -hmm. uh, yeah. software that <laughs> finds all of them. I, mm -hmm. I'm happy to share it with you. Yeah, that'd be great. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. So just, just make sure I understood what, what this whole process was. You need to start with the first column that's special. Yeah. And then across the first row, you can put any numbers after column one. Well, because they won't change. Oh, yeah, true. And then the algorithm finds the rest of the matrix. Yeah, a. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it will work uh, on a sub matrix on each step, so yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you, everybody. <laughs>